Titus wakes on the waters of a beautiful shore, contrasting the environment he has been used to before this time, marking a change in the mood of the story for the time being. As he awakens, he is hit by a blitzball and gazes to the shore where a group of players are training. Hey! You okay? Hey! Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are continuing with the storyline of Final Fantasy X. If you missed the first part, I will have it linked in the description below in a playlist. I'm not sure how many parts this series of videos will be, but I will be sure to have all the parts compiled into one super video at the end of the series. Until then, let's proceed with part two of the storyline. Titus returns to the Blitzball as how a star player would obviously by using their signature move, because how else do star athletes return balls back? Anyway, much to the impression of the players on the beach. When he arrives to them, they ask him to demonstrate that move again, and he does so, almost seemingly inspiring the players themselves. One of the players of the team then asks Titus what teams he play for. You know amateur. Who you play for? The Xanarkin Apes. What team you say again? Uh, I meant... forget that. Uh, I got to, uh close to sin and my head's all foggy like similar to riku this causes confusion amongst the group and asks titus to confirm which he retracts instead saying that he was affected by sin's toxin regardless the aurochs return to practice and the spokesperson introduces himself i'm waka coach and captain of the besaid aurochs brother uh, uh, oh. With Titus being hungry, the two set for the village to get food, but Titus couldn't help but ask. Um, it's true Xanarkin was destroyed, right? A thousand years ago? So it's just a big pile of rubble now, isn't it? Long time ago, there were a whole lot of cities in Spira. Big cities with machina, machines to run them. People played all day and let the machina do the work. And then, well... Take a look. Sin came and destroyed the Machina cities. And Xanarkan along with him. Yeah, that was about a thousand years ago. Just like you said. If you ask me, sin's our punishment for letting things get out of hand. What gets me, though, is we gotta suffer because of what some goofballs did way back when. Of course, we must always repent for our sins. That's important. It's just that it's hard to keep at it sometimes, you know? Despite Waka's attempt to cheer Titus up, the latter couldn't help but wonder. He has heard the same story from two different people about his hometown, leaving him even more confused about the fate of the city. Regardless, he joins Waka as the two make their way to Besaid Village by swimming through a river, with Waka giving a proposition. Let me go! Got a favor to ask you. You want me on your team, right? Hmm? Major Blitz tournaments coming up. All the teams in Spira will be there. It's so huge, I'm sure someone there will recognize you. Then you can go back to your old team, right? It'll be fun. What do you say, huh? Come on, come on. Sure thing. <laughs> Our team is gonna rock, eh? With Titus on the team, Waka is confident in the Aurochs' ability to do well. As they make their way to Besaid, Waka recalls his history in Blitzball and how the Aurochs have a history of losing games. With some pep talk from Titus, Waka feels invigorated to play this tournament. They also come across two Crusaders, Luzu and Gata, who warn the two of Sin being nearby and how there are fiends in the road. Waka then shows Titus Besaid village and what's around. He then introduces the Yevon prayer to Titus, which he recognizes as the Blitzball sign for victory. Man, that's like the basics of the basics. All right, I'll show you. Go ahead, you try. Hmm. Hey, 
Okay, not bad. Okay, now, go present yourself to the temple summoner. Any Blitzball player would know that prayer. It was the Blitzball sign for victory. Further enforcing his perspective of Blitzball being a connection between his hometown of Zanarkand and Spira. Titus then introduces himself to Luzu and Gata, who explain the Crusaders and their roles. The Crusaders are sworn to battle sin. We have chapters throughout Spira, accepting all who wish to join our struggle. The hero Mihen formed the Crusaders 800 years ago as the Crimson Blades. Later, our ranks grew and we called ourselves the Crusaders. We've been fighting sin ever since. What? You've been fighting 800 years and you still haven't beat it? To the shock of Titus that they haven't been able to defeat it for a very long time, despite not being from Spira, so not aware as to how society worked at the time. Titus then enters the temple, now realizing how different the world he has stepped into is from his own hometown of Zanarkand. He sees a statue of a summoner. Ten years have passed since Lord Braska became High Summoner. And finally, we receive a statue for our temple. Oh, what's a High Summoner? <gasps> uh, I, I got too close to Sin's uh, toxin. Every time he asks a question, he uses the reasoning of being near Sin's toxin as the reason he doesn't remember anything, much to his embarrassment. Regardless, he is informed of the role of the High Summoners of Spira. After a long day, Titus takes a nap as he waits to eat. Titus then dreams of his father's disappearance and his mother's reaction. But it's been nearly... It's been nearly a day already. Perhaps you could go look for us. People are searching for him now. Thank you. Who cares whether he comes back or not? But he might die. Fine, let him. Do you... Do you hate him so? When he awakens, he realizes Waka is gone and goes to the temple to check. Waka then informs him that the summoner is still inside and has not yet returned from the trial. Titus, worried for the summoner's safety, goes to check, despite Waka already informing him there are guardians inside. The precepts must be obeyed! Like I care! After making his way past the Cloister of Trial, he is met once again by Waka, who has followed him in. The two then make their way down to the chamber where they meet two people waiting in front. A blue feline-like humanoid and a woman sitting on the steps, who is clearly not happy with Waka appearing and being confused with why there is a stranger with him. Is the summoner all right? <gasps> Who are you? Sometime later, a younger girl emerges from the door, seemingly tired but announces her becoming a summoner. This thought surprised Titus, who had a very different image of summoners in his mind. When he leaves the temple, he witnesses the young summoner summoning a creature from the village circle, whom is named Balefor. On the same night, Titus is introduced by Waka to the rest of the Aurochs, who cheers them on to win the tournament. He then approaches Yuna, but is met by resistance by her companions. You heathen! Stay away from the summoner! You're a bad man! Lady Yuna, be careful. But it was really my fault to begin with. Oh. Oh. Despite this, Yuna approaches and talks to Titus, who thanks him for going to her and asks him about their departure and to tell her more about his home city of Zanarkin. Shortly after going to sleep, Titus has another dream of being on the port in Besaid but without the boat arriving. He once again sees a vision of his father who was taunting him through Riku and Yuna, which annoys him. He then wakes up and notices that Waka is gone. After taking a peek outside, he notices Waka and the woman from the chamber. It is unclear to Titus what they are talking about, but he makes out that they are talking about someone named Chapu, who happens to have a resemblance to Titus. When asked about Chapu, Waka explains that he is his brother. 
So, who's Chapu? My little brother, Chapu. He looked like you. He's dead? He was with the Crusaders when they fought Sin last year. He didn't make it. I first heard on the day of the tournament. Oh, so that's why. I became a guardian to fight Sin, yeah? Revenge, then? That was the idea. <laughs> I'm more worried about a stupid game now than avenging my brother. Well, after the next tournament, I'll be a guardian full-time. Clearing to Titus why he had such a hard time being committed to Blitzball and wanting to retire to focus on being a guardian. On the next day, Titus is gifted the Brotherhood Sword by Waka, which was meant for Chapu, who never ended up using it, opting for a Machina weapon instead. After waiting for Yuna, who had a bag of gifts, and eventually being discouraged to bring it, the group head out for the boat, thus starting the journey of Final Fantasy X and its many turbulent roads up ahead. We will stop with part 2 here and pick it up with part 3. If you are enjoying the Final Fantasy X Retold series, please leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. I have other exciting things on the way, so keep an eye out for those. We will pick up with part 3 on the next video, along with another retold video of a different game. Other than that, this is Enzo signing out, and that, as they say, is that.